So the president is heading to the Pentagon this morning to review ISIS strategy. He faces a skeptical public and a largely uncooperative Congress. The question then becomes, will the White House finally get a formal war authorization from Congress. This is the AUMF you hear about all the time. Senator Tim Kaine is a Democrat from Virginia. He's on the Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committees. He's the co-author of a bipartisan Senate war authorization against ISIS bill. Uh, Senator, it's good to hey, have you. Good to be back. Early Chris, Christmas thanks. wishes to you Indeed, and the family. And the family uh, there are some checklists of things that need to get fixed. So yep. let's go through them. The first one is, let's start with the visa uh, waiver yeah. program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we see with the K-1 fiancé visa? It's an old visa. It's right. used, people argue, abused uh, mm -hmm. for many years. But now what happened in San Bernardino has it in sharp focus. They are it using it as proof that you can't keep us safe, you can't vet well enough. What do you say? Well, look, um, can we make it better? Absolutely. But you've got to focus on the problem. And I think the fiancé visa is an area that we should focus on. Student visas, uh, the folks who came into the country who were part of the Al-Qaeda attacks were often in on student or tourist visas. Uh, the one that we are prepared to act on is the tourist, uh, the visa waiver program that allows folks from eight nations to come here without getting a visa. The House passed a bill last week, and we're going to be grappling with it. And I think we'll come to an accord where we will tighten up that visa waiver program. The good news is people started off with concern about the refugees, but once they looked at the refugee vetting process, they realized that is very tight. But we have some other areas that we, that we ought to tighten up. And so I think that's what we'll do. Now, I would submit to you that, yes, they looked at the Syrian refugee vetting situation, but they came to an opposite conclusion, as we see yep. from the poll numbers, that 40-some-odd percent of Republicans and a healthy number of Democrats say banning all Muslims is not a bad idea. People look at vetting and say, this vetting is about what it isn't, not what it is. You didn't even ask this maniac lady, to use a Trump word today, right. uh, whether or not she was responsible for all this stuff that was in public domain about right. her and jihad. You can't keep us safe. We need to back off. That's the fear. How do you address it? Well, fears are real, and you have to address them. But I think, it, it, you know, as I've gone out and talked to Virginians, they have concerns. But when I walk through what we do on refugee vetting, they say, okay, that sounds pretty solid. How about the visa waiver program? How about the fiancé visa? you got Comey coming visa. out, the head of the FBI, saying, mm -hmm. I can't use the database for these people in Syria. There's no, there's well, no, there's and, no footprint there. And, and the good news, Chris, is to the extent that a question can't be answered, somebody doesn't get in. There's 4 million registered refugees. 20,000 have been referred to the United States. 2,000 have been accepted after an 18-month review. If there's questions that can't get answered, they don't get in. It only, only takes one. That's what we yeah. hear. It only yep. takes one. Right. But the, but the proposal and the rhetoric out there, like ban all Muslims, it's exactly what ISA wants. I spent a lot of time on foreign relations and armed services in classified briefings. What do they want? What they want is to paint a West that is in a war against Islam. That's not what this is about. We're in a war against jihad. We're in a war against violence. We're not in a war against Islam. And the pushback on that becomes, who cares what they want? What they want to do is chop my head off. And this allows them a potential way to get in here. And we know they want to use our refugee and immigration. Yeah. Still, the, it allows them. You know, the, the House passed this bill about the refugees. They call it Securing America Against Foreign Enemies Act, calling refugees enemies. Refugees are not our enemies. ISIL is our enemy. Congress won't even have a debate and vote about whether ISIL is our enemy to declare war. But we call the refugees from ISIL enemies. Makes no sense. Call evil out for what it is, but don't call refugees evil. That's, that's not the problem. ISIL is the problem, and Congress has been on the sidelines since this war started in August of 2014. Now, one of the, uh, the things I like least on this show is when a, a politician comes on that I can't beat over the head about something. You have been <laughs> out in front of having a debate about the AUMF yeah. for a long time. Yeah, We've June discussed of 2014. it several times. Yeah. So I can't hold you to blame for this, but I will anyway. And Here's why. Yeah, because you have not been able to get your brothers and sisters very fair. on the left uh, yeah. to motivate debate about this right. for the president, which yep. is, you know, part of the plan of being within the party. Why won't they take it up? They all complain left and right about yeah. the strategy. This is their constitutional responsibility Absolutely. to declare war. It is ours. So I think first the president should have said right at the beginning, I need Congress on this. And the fact that he didn't, that said, I think I have the authority. Now the president is saying in February he sent over an authorization in the speech last week. He said Congress needs to get off the sidelines and do something. So I think he should have demanded more up front. Why is this about the is president yeah. being a political isolationist? He wanted the power. He doesn't want to work with Congress. Now 
hoisted on his own petard. A little bit, but here was the problem. The leadership told him in August of 2014 when he started the bombing campaign, we got a midterm election coming up. We don't want to have to vote on this. Just go ahead and do it. Why did he, he tell the American people that? He, he should have. It's not like he's got a good relationship he, with them. He, he might as well have, use the he truth. He should have. But, but instead, he, they encouraged him to do this on his own. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, why doesn't Congress vote? Congress is afraid. Congress voted on the Iraq war in 02 and most now agree it was a big mistake and they feel like may, maybe if we can just criticize the president and not be held accountable we can get away with something but the problem is we got 3600 people risking their lives overseas every day 11 service members have been killed in Operation Inherent Resolve and Congress is afraid to have a vote because wow it might be unpopular it might be controversial the Constitution says we're supposed to do it and if we do it it sends that message of resolve to our troops to our allies it sends a message of resolve to ISIL get this Chris the the Parliament in Britain the National Assembly in France the Bundestag in Germany the Duma in Russia, Russia. have had a debate and vote about this and Congress is on the sidelines what are we waiting for and I'll tell you what what happened in the UK close vote uh, very tough yeah. a lot of passion on both sides mm -hmm. really keyed the people in what was going on and why that's the kind of national resolve that we do not have right, right. now. The, the debate educates the public and brings the public along and that's one of the main things our troops need right now to know that the public has their back senator tim kane thank you very hey. much uh, er, very good early christmas wish for you and our present as the american people is to get some debate going on indeed that. we need to we need to thanks appreciate it senator